What's going on guys welcome back to F1 2021 my team career mode for season 3 round number 11 the Italian Grand Prix so it's the second time in Italy this season of course we had Imola in I believe it was round 3 now we have Monza for the Italian Grand Prix it was the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix last time so this is the proper Italian Grand Prix and um, it's going to be interesting to see how we're going to go here um, we our powertrain upgrade did complete after you know going into this race weekend but i'm now putting the upgrades on the car these upgrades are not going to come through until um until japan next round so um we're not going to have the new powertrain upgrades on the on the car i'm having to take a third control electronics going into this race so we're going to have a 10 place grid penalty here as well so that's something to keep in mind we've also dropped down to third in r d now but i'm hoping that the r d is going to boost that back up again as you can see there mercedes just inching above ours alpha Tauri are making their storm up storming way up the grid so um pierre gasly is going to be a real one to uh, to worry about here i think because he's been massively outperforming that car when it's been way further down the grid He's now starting to catch up to the top five group, so um, yeah, I think I think Gasly's going to be a bit of a force to be reckoned with if AlphaTauri keep the development going in the way that they are. So, like I said, we've got a ten-place grid penalty here for changing to a third control electronics. Um, kind of just had to do that; didn't really have another choice, so it's what has to be done. Um, and here we're just kind of. Yeah, going through Q1. I do manage to get through Q1. I wasn't sure how we're going to go at this track because, of course, this is a very much power-focused track. You don't need crazy downforce on this track. It is the lowest downforce track on the calendar. However, in Q1, it's looking fairly promising, actually. Daniel Ricciardo manages P5. We managed P7 and definitely wasn't my best lap ever, so we beat both Red Bulls there, actually, which was quite surprising. A um, little bit of a surprise, Esteban Ocon in the Alpine going out in Q1, so um, not great for him there. Also, George Russell and Mick Schumacher both beaten by their teammates Latifi and, Sh and uh, Mazepin, so that's also quite surprising there. Um, we go into Q2, and first of all, a little bit late on the brakes, a little bit deep going into Turn 1 there. This would be a better lap time than my Q1 lap, and it would actually be a pretty decent lap. It would be good enough to get, it would have been good enough to get into Q3. However, you'll see later on that I don't make it through to Q3. I mean, you probably noticed that now because I'm showing you the whole lap here. I don't make it through to Q3, but the lap time is would have been good enough to make it through to Q3. You'll see why that is in a moment, but um, yeah, this lap was decent enough. I'm surprised how much pace we actually had here, considering that, you know, on aero, chassis, and pretty much durability as well, where the top team, um, or at least there with kind of, usually it's like Red Bull and Mercedes, we're right there with them. Powertrain, we're honestly like, at this point in time, I think we're like maybe the seventh, eighth best car on power so um that the engine is the big the big problem with us at the moment it's the reason why we're not top of the table on R&D but I'm surprised we we're doing as good as we did here I crossed the line here it's P7 after that lap there but on the next lap around well I think it's actually when I go out for the second time um to set another lap time here we hit it on the curb we smack into the wall and that retires us from the session and even though our lap time, our previous lap time would have been good enough, I didn't need to go out on the track again. This is what is the most frustrating here. Um, that lap time that you just saw was from the previous run. I went into the pits, I came back out of the pits to do another lap to just make sure we could get through to Q3. That is when this happened on the opening lap for that. But we look there, we're P10 because we've been knocked out. But that lap time, I think, would actually have been good enough for P8. So we didn't have to go out again. We would have made it through to Q3, but my crash means that we're out of qualifying. So that's a bit annoying. We have got a temperature grip penalty anyway, though. Welcome back to one of only two countries that has held a race every year since the very first Formula One World Championship in 1950. It is, of course, Italy, one of the great racing nations. And it's time to get underway for the Italian Grand Prix. With top speeds up to 215 miles per hour and an average lap speed of around 155 miles per hour, Monza's reputation as one of the fastest circuits in the sport is well earned. We have 11 corners on this 3.6 mile track with the best overtaking chance coming into the heavy braking zone of the Turn 1 chicane. I'm joined again today by none other than Anthony Davidson, 
Tell me, Ants, obviously there's a lot of development work that goes on with these cars between the races. You've been both a test driver and a race driver. What differences are there in the way you approach those roles? Interesting question, Crofty. They're two very different mindsets. I mean, when I tested for BAR, we had full in-season testing where, per driver, you'd cover up to 15,000 kilometers per season. And in that role, it was more about working for the team, trying to help them improve the car and drive as systematically as you could, so that that data could be analyzed in the most consistent way. When you're lining up on the grid for a race, however, your frame of mind's all about what you can get out of the situation on that day, and the car's the tool to help you achieve what you want. You still want to focus on setup, of course, but it's more about the here and now, getting yourself as far up the field as possible, and less about development work for the future. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. Young superstar Max Verstappen starts from pole position. Sergio Perez lines up alongside. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Norris, Hamilton, Antonio Giovinazzi, and Gasly, Ricardo, Leclerc, Sainz, and Christian Lungard. Joe, Sonoda, Lance Stroll, and Vettel. Fernando Alonso, Bottas, Esteban Ocon, and Nicholas Latifi. Mazepin, Shaw, Russell, and Mick Schumacher. And now it's time to head down to the track. All right, so here we go to five red lights for the Italian Grand Prix at Monza. It's McLaren on the front row, and away we go. It's a pretty good start for us, not a great start for Latifi up ahead. We're starting in P20 here, thanks to our grid penalty from P10, which we ended up having. We're having a little look up the inside. Everybody goes very slow into the into the first chicane, and we're just gonna try and sneak ourselves alongside Esteban Ocon, but we can't quite keep ourselves alongside. We've actually got George Russell alongside us there in the other Alfa Romeo, but we managed to just about get past him. We are up into P18. We've just made two positions off the start there. So not too bad, but not as good as I perhaps would have hoped. But we've just got to put our head down and keep on going here. It's Esteban Ocon, the car ahead in the Alpine. He did not have a very good qualifying here. The Alpine going out in Q1 is not the best. I mean, they are, I think, the seventh quickest team now. So I'm just now just behind Alpha Tauri. They were the sixth quickest. They were kind of the best of the rest I suppose you could call it with that the top five teams being so close to each other we had a bit of a moment coming out of that corner there but we've managed to gather it all up but have lost a little bit of time to the cars ahead but um yeah the main thing here is I want to keep in slipstream want to keep in DRS range of the cars ahead because I know that our I mean even though our pace here seemed a lot better than I was expecting it to be um I still don't think our engines really, I mean, it's, it's just not, it's not as good as everybody else's. So we've got to make time through the corners and we've got to stay in the slipstream, in the DRS, so that we can give ourselves the best chance of getting a good position here. As now we're hooked up behind, I think that is Valtteri Bottas or Fernando, Al it's Fernando Alonso because Ocon's managed to get past him. We're going to go for a bit of a dive, a late dive into turn one, but Alonso, it gives us the racing room, good racing from him. We're going to try going around the outside of the chicane there. We're a little bit on the grass and now actually gives Alonso a better run. My engineer is telling me good overtake, but it's not done yet. We're side by side with Alonso through the right hand corner there, but I think we've just about managed to get the position from the two-time world champion returning. Well, I mean, he's been returned to the sport for a while now. We're in season three. It's his third season back in the sport, but um, yeah, we have managed to get past him, and now we've got his teammate Valtteri Bottas in the other Williams up ahead. Really unfortunate for Williams because they were looking like they were really progressing up the order. Now they seem to have kind of gone, they seem to be dipping back towards the back of the grid again, but at the moment still doing decent in the midfield fight as we manage to get the overtake done on Bottas. He still tries having a look around the outside, but in front of us there is a massive kerfuffle with the two Aston Martins and Esteban Ocon in the Alpine. Ocon, after a poor, poor qualifying, managing to make his way up the order. But look at that. That's Carl Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari, the championship leader, going up in smoke. And it looks like Carlos Sainz, as we give Vettel a little bit of a bump through that next corner, that is Charles Leclerc out of this race. It's his first retirement of the season, the championship leader. That is going to hurt him. I think he only has two points um, clear of Sergio Perez in the stands at the moment. So... It's looking like he's probably going to be overtaken as 
um, overtaken as the champion, the driver's championship leader at this point in time. But we just look on here with that big kerfuffle with the cars ahead of us, the two Aston Martins of Vettel and Stroll and Destevan Ocon. Ocon gets his way past. We're trying to make our way past Sebastian Vettel here, but it's just very, very difficult. I mean, those guys were like three wide through the chicane and then out of the chicane as well it was like two or three wide too so a lot of stuff going on there and you also had Leclerc which we were trying to kind of you know navigate around as he was retiring on the side of the circuit but now here we've got a run on Sebastian Fessel we're right behind him and we're now right alongside him and we're going to try and outbreak him into the next corner and we've just about managed to do it we're up into a slightly higher position I don't know if this is like P16 or something we run quite wide out of that corner there but it's not really too bad compromises are run a little bit but not too big of an issue we're actually into P is that P15 P14 maybe there even as we're now having a look on Lance Stroll we're going to try and go to the outside we make him go defensive to the inside into turn one he bounces over the curbs a little bit of contact there and as we come around here there's actually a little bit of contact with my rear right wheel and his front left I'm just looking at my heads up display make sure there's no damage and I don't think we hit his front wing so we haven't given Stroll any front wing damage it was just um, banging tires together as at the front of the grid, Sergio Perez has actually managed to get himself up into the race lead here off the start, but Verstappen is fighting back. He wants that lead back after his pole position, and they are too wide through this whole section here, but you've got Lando Norris in the other McLaren right there behind too. He's kind of been playing second fiddle to Verstappen for a little bit of this season now, but um, I think Norris actually has two wins. Verstappen only has one win so far this season, but Verstappen, I believe, is higher in the championship, has just been performing a a little bit better with the podiums and stuff of late against his teammates um, but he's gonna have to settle for p2 at the moment and try and get Perez on a later lap also further just a little bit in front of us I believe we have got Carlos Sainz going for a move on Guan Yu Zhou he's gone to the outside of turn one brings him to the inside of turn two of the chicane but it looks like Guan Yu Zhou's just about managed to get the power down a little bit better and Carlos Sainz has got to be very wary of a very, very quick and speedy Pierre Gasly behind him. He's going defensive into the next chicane and looks like he's just about held on to that for now, but hasn't been able to make a move on Joe. As we continue on here, Stroll is keeping with us and he hasn't gone into the pit, so I'm happy about that because it means we haven't given him front wing damage. But up ahead, there's yellow flag and there's a massive squabble of cars here. What is going on? There's people ghosting. I'm a little bit confused about what's going on. So I decided to just go for it. The safety car has been deployed and I don't know what happened there. Ha Lewis Hamilton on the left there going very slowly. So it looks like he's been involved and we watch on with Lewis Hamilton's on board here. And as we see him go down here, his tire, left front tire, gets a puncture and that's a big big puncture we haven't seen a puncture like that very much i think we actually saw the only other puncture we've seen really is um was from sebastian vettel in monza season one so um same sort of place actually as well i think it was just past that chicane so um lewis hamilton having to come into the pits here to um to change that tire and we're going to come into the pits as well because the safety car is out we're going to double stack with with ricardo but i think it's the way to go stick on a pair of hard tires or set of hard tires and go to the end the original plan was to go from soft to medium but we're coming in a few laps earlier um so going to the end on the mediums would be a bit of a bit of a stretch so we're going to go onto the hards instead and just make sure we can get to the end that's what a lot of other people here seem to be doing there's a couple of cars at the front who have decided not to come in and are still on the soft tires there's a few at the back there also on the softs but we continue here under green flag racing we've got yuki Sonoda up ahead of us Carlos Sainz is looking behind us as we're going to have a little bit of a dive on Sonoda into turn one, but we get smacked into the back of it. It's telling me illegal overtake on Sonoda. I don't know why we got smacked into in the, on the back. We didn't hit anyone um, ourselves. Bottas is out of the session, and we have to let Sonoda go. It doesn't look like there's a safety car or anything, but Bottas out of the session. I think that is from the bump that we had behind us as we watch a replay again here. You just see me getting a great run on Sonoda and he kind of gets caught up with the Aston Martin up ahead. Looks like a bit of bodywork comes off there. I dart to the inside and Bottas just absolutely smashes into the back of us, destroys his car on the back of our car. Thankfully, he kind of hit right on our wheel. So 
and the rear wheels don't seem to break in the way the front wheels do. But we look at a replay and on board from Bottas here, he just, he's way to the right hand side really early and just breaks super duper late. I mean, that was a ridiculous dive bomb from Valtteri Bottas. I don't know what he was doing there. We look up from Carlos Sainz's view. He was just behind us. We see we dart to the right to get past Sonoda, and Bottas just absolutely plows into the back of us. If I wasn't there, he would have been probably connect collecting Sonoda in that position there. But we actually have a look. Sonoda gets a little bit of damage from Stroll up ahead. That's why we dart to the right of him, because he slows down. And then Bottas just smashes into him. Uh, smashes into us. We then have to let Sonoda go past because apparently it's an illegal overtake, even though I didn't hit Sonoda. I got smacked into the back off, so really don't know what's going on there. But we're going to continue on here, and as I can see, Sonoda is really slow now because he's got that front wing damage. So we're going to try and go for a pretty opportunistic dive into this corner here. Not a place that you'd usually expect to get an overtake done, but with the... Um, with the damage that he's got, we're just going to go for it. But of course, down the straight, he's still going to be pretty damn good. If anything, he's probably quicker down the straight now because of that little less downforce. But into the next corner, he does actually get alongside us, but he has to break a lot earlier because he's not going to make it through that corner anywhere near as quickly as we are with a broken front wing. So um, we do manage to keep the position, and Sonoda will then come in for a front wing change. As on to the, uh, towards the front again here, it's McLaren... It's McLaren... Um, and Red Bull, followed by McLaren and Red Bull. I think this is Giovinazzi, the rear driver here, trying to get his way past Lando Norris, and he's just about managed to get that done. So obviously, just in front, Verstappen has managed to get himself past Max uh, Verstappen. Uh, Verstappen has managed to get himself past Perez. Sorry, I'm really, it's, it's still a bit confusing. Um, you know, I'm talking about a Red Bull, but... And I'm talking about Verstappen and Perez, but Verstappen's not in a Red Bull, he's in the McLaren, so it's a little bit confusing at times, but um, yeah, Verstappen has regained the race lead with Perez second, Giovinazzi's now managed to get himself up to third, and Landon Norris in fourth, a fair way ahead of the rest of the grid. As we continue on here, we've got a big gap behind us, actually Mick Schumacher in P9 behind us on the soft tyres, believe he's still on the soft from the start of the race, so I expect him to be coming into the pits pretty soon if not on this lap um, and dropping a few positions down the order because he hasn't come into pit yet but um, we're just going to continue on here um, and try and catch up to Lance Stroll up ahead of us we should be quite a bit quicker than him but um, yeah a lot of time to make up here so um, we've just got to put our head down and see what we can do as we continue looking at the front of the grid here Sergio Perez wants that P1 back again it's a great battle between these two. We've actually seen quite a few battles between the two former teammates this season and Perez goes for a move around the outside to the inside of turn two on the chicane here but we always see, we often see that the car on the outside there gets the better run and that is what happens this time around once again. Verstappen keeps P1, gets the better run but Perez is putting a lot of pressure on the back of his former teammate but for now Verstappen is going to keep that position and we'll see if Perez can do anything about it and Joe Giovinazzi and Norris also catching up just behind them. Okay, there appears to be an issue. We're currently investigating. And that is not what I wanted to hear. The team is saying we've got a bit of an issue. We haven't had a mechanical failure all season so far. 11 races in, we haven't had one. So I'm somewhat expecting to have one pretty soon. And I have a feeling this may be the one. I mean, we're just going to have to wait and see. But, um, yeah... It's not looking promising, considering it's been so long since we've had a mechanical failure. And sure enough, we're going to get this. It looks critical. Find somewhere to retire as soon as possible. We can't risk you carrying on with this race. Again, find somewhere safe to stop. We need you to retire. And there it is. We will be retiring from the Italian Grand Prix. We were running pretty well in P8 here. Um, we're somewhat catching Lance Stroll up ahead. Um, I don't know if we would have really made much more positions we, we probably would have got stroll but ricardo was the next one after that i don't think we would have ca caught him um just too far up the road and yeah unfortunately it's a zero point finish race for us the first one of the season and the first retirement there for us too then. victory in the italian grand prix an historic race and an achievement they can be immensely proud of so anthony what made the difference out there today I think that smart tyre management on track and very smooth driving definitely assisted in their victory today. That combination meant they got the absolute maximum out of their tyres at all times. 
As the winners make their way up to the podium, one can only imagine the celebrations that will take place at McLaren tonight. Congratulations to everyone on the team, securing the win and proving they're a force to be reckoned with out on the track. So Max Verstappen ends up clinching the race, winning the Italian Grand Prix. Giovinazzi actually manages to get P2, so I'm not sure what happened to Perez. I think he finished in P4, so kind of a switch of the two Red Bull drivers there. And Lando Norris manages to pick up P3. It's been a little while, I think, since Norris has been on the podium, so... Good to see him back up there again, but it is Verstappen on top. Ricardo finishes P6. Uh, Gasly, great finish there in P5. We DNF from the session. Esteban Ocon gets himself up to P10. That's pretty good. Carlos Sainz finally scoring some more points. Only two, though, for P9. And, of course, myself, Valtteri Bottas, and Charles Leclerc all DNF from this race. So not a good race for DNFs there. Perez then, of course, takes the lead of the Drivers' Championship. Max Verstappen moves up to second. Giovinazzi moves up to third. And Charles Leclerc drops to fourth position. He's been in first since round two in China. He's now dropped from first place to fourth. It's his drop from first, first drop of the season. It's going to be a lot to get back there. Ricardo moves down to fifth. We move down to seventh. And there's also a few other moves around there. And we also drop in the Constructors' Championship too. McLaren, thanks to a good result, move themselves up to second in the Constructors. We move down to third. Alpha Tauri move up to sixth with that very good one from, um, very good finish from Gasly there. And Aston Martin move up to eighth ahead of Williams, scoring their first, first few points of the season. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, please go ahead, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.